Good morning, friends. How are you all doing? I'm August. This is Cozy Rosie Reads, and this is the start of another weekly reading vlog. It is currently Thursday morning. I have my iced coffee, of course, and there is finally in the air for me a reading mood. I am in such a reading mood. All I want to do is read like all day. I want to be out in the sunshine because it's nice outside and read all the time. I am currently reading a book that I am I'm enjoying. I don't think it's going to be anything higher than a three star, but it's getting me really engaged and really into reading right now. And I just want to sit in a park and enjoy it. <laughs> and that's fantastic. I actually just filmed my June TBR yesterday. So I'm going to go ahead and link that video down below because it will be coming out before this video. And the books on that June TBR honestly could not be more fantastic and perfect for the mood that I'm in right now, which is a lot of like summer energy. So that pile of books for my June TBR is inspiring me so freaking much to read as much as I possibly can so I can get to all of those. There's not a single book in there that I don't want to read. I need to close my windows. I hate summertime here. I love summertime so much, but this neighborhood, I don't like living here in the summer. Let me tell you, BRB, it's so loud. Also, just because I got up, does anyone see it? This, this is the worst bruise I've ever had in my life, and it's the weirdest bruise I've ever seen. Short season, bruise season. What is this? Straight line, it's so dark. <laughs> and it's from Winston, if anyone's curious. It's from Winston. He was on my leg and he jumped off and for some reason it just like immediately hit my fascia and I immediately bruised. Anyway, so yeah, I'm in a huge reading mood. I want this reading vlog to be like finishing at least the book that I'm currently reading, which I will talk about here briefly, and hopefully starting another book or finishing another book. I don't know what it is. I just, I need, I need to read. I'm, <laughs> I have a need for read speed. So I hope you all are doing really well. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, the book I'm currently reading is Her Daughter's Mother by Daniela Petrova. I did talk about this one in my June TBR because I did start it a few days prior to June starting, but I went to a park the other night and I was reading it and I am now 125 pages in at the start of chapter 22. So this book follows several different narrators. We have some chapters that are from our protagonist, Lana, who is a woman in her late 30s and she has been trying for eight years to get pregnant and has been very unsuccessful, so she decides to do an egg donor. But at the time when she is about to get the egg donor's like transfer, her partner of like eight years ups and decides to leave and he needs space and he is not sure if he really wants to either be in this relationship or even have kids. Like it's just been this ongoing eight year process of like trying to get pregnant and struggling. So he decides to leave, his name is Tyler, and we do get some chapters in here that follow Tyler. So this is multiple timelines, multiple narrators. Then we also get the perspective of the egg donor and her name is Katya and Katya is from Bulgaria. There's a lot of Bulgarian references in here because Lana, our other protagonist is Bulgarian and wanted to have an egg donor that would have Bulgarian ancestry and lineage. So at the time when Lana's egg donor transfer is successful, she, you know, has a picture of what Katya looks like, is very excited, and then one day she's riding on the subway after her partner has left her and sees Katya in real life and they live in New York City. And she's like, what do I do? Oh my gosh, like, I feel so connected to this woman. I'm now literally carrying her baby, but she doesn't even know who I am because there's so much anonymity with egg donors. Uh, so when Katya gets off on a stop at the subway, uh, Lana decides to follow her and then they interact and then they become friends. And it's this really interesting relationship. Lana is withholding the information that she's pregnant with Katya's child, basically. But things take a really interesting turn because now Katya is missing. She is gone. And Lana might be the last one to have seen her anywhere. We don't know if Katya is alive or just a missing person, if she just ran off because her citizenship to the States is 
ending soon and she would have to be going back to Bulgaria. So right now where we're at in the book is we are bouncing all these different timelines. We get Katya's perspective, how she was in school because she goes to Columbia. We're getting Tyler's perspective of like leading up to him leaving Lana. We're getting Lana's current timeline now, like what she's going through. And it's just very intriguing and engaging. So it's definitely a literary fiction, psychological thriller. It's very easy to read. And I think that's what's getting me into it is it's just, it's very page turning. It's super easy to read. It's super easy to follow. I'm having a lot of fun with it. I just don't think it's gonna have a really big impact on me. It would really wow me. <laughs> if it did have a big impact, I would be very, very surprised. But right now it's just a fun story. I like that there are so many complicated characters that are all like intersecting. I like that. And like while the characters themselves don't feel super deep or in depth or dynamic right now, their relationships with each other are and it's very interesting and I like seeing the different timelines and how everything's woven together so far. So I still have a ways to go. I'm not quite at the halfway mark but I've been reading really quickly and I definitely feel like I can finish it in this vlog hopefully the next few days. So that is my little check-in, my friends, my little update of what I'm currently reading. Uh, my friend is coming over here soon, so I, so I actually, so I actually need to go to the grocery store to pick up some lunch for us, and she's gonna come over, and we're gonna have a co-working date, which I love. We just get work done while chit-chatting and eating snacks and stuff, so she's gonna come over pretty soon. And then tonight, what I do believe, because uh, I will say, I have just been really loving sitting outside at a park while the sun is setting and reading. That has been like the highlight of my spring slash early summer so far, is just being outside and reading and bringing a picnic blanket and just just being outside so i think i'm gonna do that again tonight i did it not last night but the night before and it's becoming my my new favorite thing uh, i think it's really hard as somebody who lives in a city and lives in an apartment to not have a backyard or access to anywhere outside so i actually have to like physically drive myself to a park to enjoy the outside and that's something I'm really taking advantage of this summer and I'm loving it. it. It has changed my mood so much because I'm actually being outside. I get to like just be in the fresh air and just read and I'm actually reading a lot when I go to the park and I think I'm gonna do that again tonight because that is becoming my new favorite thing of all time rather than just like sitting at home and feeling stuck in my apartment and just like watching a show or something. I've really been just spending time outside and reading and it's been really lovely. Very, really weird update. I think I'm growing my shag out. It's very long and it definitely needs a trim. My like little mullet wolf cut. Um, it's very long. At this point, I would have trimmed it like at least a week ago, <laughs> but it's still going. I think I'm gonna grow it out and see what happens. <laughs> I have no idea what's gonna happen. I have not grown it out since I cut it last summer. So I'm gonna go and get ready to head to the grocery store to get some snacks for my friend and I. So that is that. I hope y'all are doing really well. Thank you so much for being here and I'll check in with you all very soon.
Hi friends, it is Saturday, but it feels like Sunday for me because yesterday I spent all day photographing a wedding, which was amazing, it was stunning, it was gorgeous. Can't wait to share some photos on the socials. And then I had to wake up early this morning for another photo session that was about like half an hour away. I'm so tired. <laughs> I am exhausted. My eyes are just like that really like warm, exhausted feeling. I basically spent after getting back from that shoot this morning just editing um, and backing up my files and all of that stuff basically staring at a screen which has not been helping. Um, I'm really tired but I feel like I still have so much work to do and I have to like do the dishes and like stuff like that and I have no motivation at all but I know I'll feel way better when I get it done so that's where I'm currently at but I did want to give a little update because I am so close to finishing her daughter's mother. I took the dust jacket off because I really did not like the cover art for this and dust jackets drive me bonkers. I really am not a fan of hardcover books. Um, I'm currently on chapter 47, page 240. I've been reading every night before bed, but I fall asleep so fast, which is great. That's not a bad problem to have at all. This is honestly just a lot of fun. It's just fun. There's nothing wowzes about it. I am curious to see where this goes and how the plot unravels and like who done it because right now there are so many red herrings and it's just reading so much like a typical mystery, which is interesting because the plot description and the blurb definitely made this seem way more like a literary fiction thriller. Um, but no, it's definitely more like a thriller mystery. It's pretty hokey. Some of the dialogue is just like a little ridiculous, but it's still page turning. It's still a very page turning book. I'm having a lot of fun with it. Say hi to everyone. He just woke up. So it's very page turning, very engaging. Like literally as soon as I finish a chapter and the chapters are so short, like maybe like three or four pages. Um, I immediately want to start a new chapter. Like, it's really hard to put down. Uh, so I'm really enjoying it. It's just not wowing me. So it's just entertainment value at this point, which is fine. I enjoy that. So I'm gonna get as much work done as I possibly can before I go out for some pizza. <laughs> I'm really craving pizza. I've been craving pizza for like so long, like two weeks. I really want pizza. Um, so I'm gonna get pizza later. <sighs> I'm gonna get as much work done as I possibly can, but like if my level of like stamina and energy is like a little video game bar, I am like a Sims, like I am, I'm in the orange. <laughs> I'm really, really tired. Uh, so we'll see how much I can get done. I would love to read later today and like finish this book, but I feel like as soon as I open it, I am going to fall asleep. So that's my little check-in of where I'm at in life. I will check in with you all soon when I finish the book, which hopefully will just be like tomorrow at the very latest. So hope you all are doing well. Winston's purring. Okay, see ya. <laughs>
friends from my bed. It is Sunday. It's actually a very rainy and cold Sunday and I am feeling so tired and I'm just going to enjoy it. I'm going to just relax into the feeling of this like sleepy Sunday. Since I last chatted with you all, I had a wonderful time. I ended up getting my pizza, which was awesome, walked around, and then last night I did go out with a friend and we went dancing and clubbing and it was so much fun. Um, so I definitely am feeling the exhaustion today, but I just got back from a lunch with my dad and I was just like thinking the whole time, I'm like, I just want to go home and curl up in bed in the middle of the day and finish this freaking book. It needs to happen. I'm so close to the end. I fell asleep while reading last night after getting home from the club. Who am I? Going to clubs, going dancing. It's so fun. <laughs> I feel like I'm just now like doing the things that I should have, should have, quote unquote, should have been doing when I was like 21, but I was in the throes of like working on my career and being a grown up that I just like never went out. I never like went dancing with friends. It's great. It's so much fun. Um, but anyway, I am on chapter 52 now. I'm on page 270. So close to the end here. So I'm going to curl up in the middle of the day, in the middle of the afternoon. Winston is sleeping next to me here. We have the heated blanket on. That's how chilly it is. And I'm going to try and finish this book without falling asleep. But if I fall asleep, it's okay. And I'll let you know when I finish it. But that's just like my little update. Yesterday was so much fun. Today's been a lot of fun, but I'm definitely feeling my body just want to like curl up and rainy Sundays, you know, just really nice. <laughs> Gives you an excuse to just lay in bed and do nothing. Things are definitely happening in this book. Have I given an update on what's actually happening? Basically, it's uh, a very much uh, whodunit and things are just like coming to the surface with Lana and her ex-partner Tyler things are happening. Tyler and Lana were both questioned in Katya's disappearance. A lot of like really weird connections and then things have come out more and more about Katya and her mental stability as well as what she was up to prior to all of this happening. Like right before it we start a little bit further back. So the chapters of Katya are titled like then and Lana and Tyler's chapters are like now. Um, so we're bouncing timelines and perspectives still, which I really enjoy. It makes the chapters really short. It makes it really easy to read. Um, I am really curious to see what happens though, because it started out with like a lot of red herrings and now I just like have no clue. Like I have like no inkling at all where this is going to go. So I'm actually very intrigued to find out what happened and how all this is going to wrap up. But I do have a feeling it might wrap itself up in a nice little bow. So I will let you know. Okay. I hope y'all are doing really well. Hopefully I don't fall asleep. Wish me luck. <laughs> You're gonna jump in the video. Just do it already. There it is. There it is. There he goes. <laughs> well, friends, I managed to finish her daughter's mother. Yep, there's Winston. We both took a nap. <laughs> we both fell asleep. <laughs> I took a good like hour long snooze and it was delicious and now baby is awake. Baby meaning Winston, which means he might be very chatty. That's what happens as soon as he wakes up. He's just very verbal. Does anyone else have a verbal cat like as verbal as Winston? Because it's nonstop friends. If, uh, if you've been here for a while and you know how chatty he is, this is him all the time. Unless you're sleeping. Anyway, the book. Um. <laughs> 
Wow. <laughs> Uh, yeah, you know, it, it was, it was fun. It was a fun reading experience at the beginning. Definitely enjoyed it. Just in terms of like entertainment value, this is definitely just like an entertainment value book. Um, but the ending, it was so close to being emotional and so close to letting me like feel something. And then it diverted into a new chapter and that last chapter is like when things perfectly wrap up and it's kind of like a, you know, eight months from now or eight months later kind of thing which I can't stand it's just like we end on this like really good emotional impact thing and then we don't unpack that it's more of like shock value and then we just go right to like yeah eight months later basically it also did that thing at the end that I really hate I really hate this about certain books but I also understand why authors do this the sun literally just came out so if I'm really squinty I'm also very sleepy but the sun feels really nice. I understand why authors do this, but to me it just feels like a thesis paper. They spend like the last like two paragraphs of their book explaining the meaning. <laughs> and, like, like as if they were trying so hard to make certain things apparent throughout the entire book, like a, an underlying ubiquitous theme or references or mentions that just obviously didn't stick and then at the end it's just like this explanation of all of this happened and everything is connected and it just like gives you what you should be thinking about but if it was clearer throughout the entire novel you wouldn't have to do that and I'm thinking about like bigger themes like time, mortality, space, uh, coincidences, philosophy, existentialism, those kinds of topics that I love so much in literature, but I like it more when it's more prevalent throughout the entire story in a way where it's told through the writing or how the characters interact with each other, or maybe it is an omnipresent narrator. But I don't enjoy it when it's just like at the end of the book as an explanation of like, here's something to make you think. Here's what the whole book was like supposed to kind of like be about but I didn't feel any of that during it, like at all. Um, and the, for this one in particular, it was about like coincidences. Lana's partner, Tyler, is a philosophy professor and he's like studying and has a focus on coincidences. And like there'd be very, very small segments in here about what he's teaching and lecturing on that I found really interesting and fascinating, but it wasn't enough for me to ever think that that's what this whole book was about was like coincidences and at the very end it was just kind of like if this didn't happen then this wouldn't have happened and if this wouldn't have happened then i wouldn't be here now like that oh i don't like that like don't spoon feed me please like don't spoon feed your your audience like can we just have assumptions that your audience can actually grasp larger concepts such as like philosophy and coincidences and have it be sprinkled throughout the narrative instead of just being given to us on a platter at the very end. I don't like that. Another book that did that was another book that I read last summer called Seven Days of You. It did the same exact thing. That one was a YA. Throughout it, it had like tiny little like sprinkles of the concept of space or how dense and terrifying and unknown space is and time and how time itself is just this very bizarre concept but then it was like it, they would sprinkle it in a little bit like on top of like a little sundae ice cream sundae little sprinkles but then winston don't please but then at the very end it was just like we're gonna go through this whole plot this whole narrative these whole characters and things that happen very plot heavy very plot driven and at the very end be like it was about time and space the whole time that's not no i need to be able to feel that that's what the concept is and feel that there's something bigger going on even if it is something as strange and unknown and spontaneous and bizarre as coincidences especially in philosophy and through a philosophical lens yeah i just am not a fan of authors doing that i don't know why i still have this book on my head but it's just like really comforting right now so i'm just gonna let it happen so yeah overall this is like super not memorable book definitely in the like 2.753 star range it was enjoyable to read and i will say that the character of katya became way more interesting the further we dove into like her past and her backstory some of it definitely felt very cliche and very melodramatic 
but I also think that she's a character that does become very unhinged and I wish there was a little bit more about like her mental stability and where she was at because she was a character who was so anti getting treatment for her mental stuff going on didn't want to talk to a therapist didn't want to talk to a shrink has a lot of dependency on external validation specifically through men and the male gaze and male relationships and i found that really interesting i found that to be like the most interesting part of this book which surprised me because at the beginning I was just invested in it as being like a psychological thriller, which it turned out to be more of like a whodunit mystery. And then it turned into almost like I wanted it to be way more a character study of Katya specifically because she is a very wounded soul and her trying to find this sense of belonging and love for a past that she had no control over just due to her childhood trauma was really fascinating. So I would love a book where it was just like only following, following Katya. Every other character in this was just like, boring white bread like just so bland not even white bread okay white bread even has like some spongy texture they were just whole wheat whole grain blech like seeds like flax seeds and oats <laughs> kind of bread they were just so boring uh yeah so Katya was definitely the most interesting character I'm happy that I got to like follow her a little bit in this just because she had so much going on that I wanted to like psychoanalyze her and that's the good thing I guess about this book or just like any type of book in general where you can latch onto a character that you find really fascinating and they have way more depth and so many different layers to unpack that on face value it does seem like a very dramatic trope character who's reckless who goes out partying who is a really bad influence on other people doesn't have a lot of close relationships or friendships inserts herself into drama causes drama and then leaves I find those characters really interesting because once we like just kind of dug through that and got over the exterior and appearance and perception of that kind of character there is like a very wounded person in there who really is just looking for purpose and belonging and love so <laughs> I'll get off of my like psychoanalytical therapeutic like perspective here on personalities and behaviors but Katya was interesting. Overall, this book like really didn't do a whole lot for me other than that. So I think in that sense, it's not a very memorable book. Do I recommend it? Sure, if you are interested in like a good like whodunit thriller mystery, but I can't say that you'll be satisfied with the ending. So yeah, that is Her Daughter's Mother. We finished a book. We finished a book. And up next, I'm going to start Aquamarine by Carol Anshaw. This one sounds fantastic. It is a little bit shorter floppy paperback I'm really excited for this book so I'm going to be starting this later tonight most likely but I am actually going to go ahead and get ready to go out for a game night with some friends so I have to go leave hopefully I have energy and I can show up and actually play a game and not feel completely drained and exhausted but my nap was great I'm gonna start this. Honestly, I don't know if this is gonna be the end of the vlog or if I'm gonna continue filming for a little bit. We'll see, we'll see. Uh, but if it is the end, thank you so incredibly much for being here, friends. I hope you all are doing really well. Uh, since this book, let's comment some emojis. I always like, if it's a reading vlog, I like to attach it somehow to like the book I'm reading. So on here, there are some flowers and like a dragonfly. So let's do some like insects and some flowers and plants and stuff. I think that would be really cool and really pretty. Thank you so much for being here. I hope you enjoyed this vlog. If this is the end, if it is the end, definitely stay tuned because I want to just vlog all the time now. Now that I'm fully self-employed, I have so much more time to vlog. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and just start a new vlog tomorrow, like as early as tomorrow about my reading experience with Aquamarine. Thank you again for being here, friends. And I can't wait to see you all again very soon for my next video. Stay cozy, my friends. Bye.